uh, before the before we came on the air, I was talking to Chuck about a prophetic word I'd gotten about the hammer of favor. I'm going like, well, why would you need a hammer? <laughs> you know, God's word in Jeremiah says God's word's like a hammer that breaks into pieces the rock of most stubborn resistance. There was a time when the they moved from just the kind of favor that we think that we would live in until the favor, there was a rock of offense from the, the, the Egyptians against the children of Israel. Even the fear as they, as they multiplied, based on the promise of God, he said, I will multiply you. So they start multiplying. Then the Egyptians start fearing them and they start raising up rocks of resistance against the children of Israel. And it finally took the hammer of favor where God said, I'm going to start moving against these rocks of resistance, which were the false gods in Egypt, to finally break them through into a new place. I really believe, Chuck, that we are in a situation now where there are rocks of resistance that have come against the favor that Christianity has had in the United States, for example, and it's going to take the hammer of God to break through to take us fully into the new place he wants us to go. Well, Mike, you know that favor, God puts it in us. It's, it's like grace, but it's different because it comes because of some action we do. And all of a sudden, God favors us because of his covenant plan within us. And it just sets us in front of people that mm -hmm. we would not expect, just like Joseph being set in front of Pharaoh. And yet that favor I see is having to be, I, I love what you're saying about the hammer. I think the church is having to be broken. Uh, an old identity has to be broken off of it. Mm. We have lost favor with the world. Joseph was a father to Pharaoh. That's the apostolic movement today. We need to know that we're not just fathering those people inside God's kingdom structure, but we are being sent to father others out into the world, and we need as much favor in the world mm -hmm. as we can walk in. And the church is having, be, to, uh, is having to be broken out of some religious identity so it can gain that favor in a practical way. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I really sense some of you are watching... Uh, uh, we're talking about, I want to talk about uh, global spheres. Uh, this is a huge building that that uh, uh, Glory of Zion has purchased. How many square feet is that building? It's 268,000 square feet altogether. Yeah, the whole, it's huge. The whole, you know, we've got several buildings that are attached to it. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, it really represents what the year's about. Divine mm -hmm. recovery and the opening up of new supply lines. It has taken us 12 years to divinely recover this desolate uh, Boeing building mm -hmm. factory where they mm -hmm. make cockpits. Mm -hmm. And we are to the point now where we have the Miracle Center totally prepared. And yet, the only thing we haven't done is put that communication uh, fabric through it that mm -hmm. it needs mm -hmm. to really communicate mm -hmm. a new demonstration of what God's doing. Mm -hmm. We Everything else here is totally restored mm -hmm. inside and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I feel like this year, once that is fully integrated into what we have been developing over these last 12 years, we're going to see the same thing happen in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're going to see miracles start breaking out and people are going to seek after what what we represent the lord mm -hmm. they're going to start seeking and coming we have watched a transition come here where the cities meet here the police forces meet here uh Every group in the area, all the farmers, Pam will be hosting all the ag uh, uh, leaders in the whole uh, uh, Texas. Uh, we do that during December. All of the... Um, uh, master gardeners and the master naturalists do their teaching here. Well, you know, we have our tabernacle. We haven't lost our 
our identity in worship, but we've offered what worship has created to the community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and this uh, is a model. And this is really so key for us to understand as we move from church to apostolic center. Mm -hmm. We have got to offer the community, Mike, that favor that God has given mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. so we can help them become. Mm -hmm. And and it's not been the easiest thing. I would not have chosen this for my <laughs> assignment. But again, Cindy Jacobs prophesied, <laughs> I hear Corinth and you're going to end up in Corinth. And we ended up in Corinth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I go back to you two. You have spoken into existence, and this is what the prophetic does, destiny of people's lives. Mm -hmm. And you did it in my life. And uh, I see us going to the next level mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm, this year for mm -hmm. states and nations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and really moving forward so we have an acceleration. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I see. The Lord would say that you have prepared a banqueting table. Mm -hmm there at Global Spheres. And some of you also out there, you are, you are preparing your Psalm 23 for 2023 banqueting table. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. I mean, in fact, I feel a huge yeah, anointing. Yeah, a morning on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters, green pastures for his name's sake. And the Lord just would say to Global Spheres, that, that you have prepared the table and the enemy is raging. Now you can say this for you listening. The enemy is raging all around, but the Lord would say, stay the course, stay the course. Don't get pushed off. Don't let discouragement push you off. And the Lord would say, prepare the place for my miracles. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Big, big anointing. <clears throat> yeah, and the Lord would say, even now, now let us explain to you uh, in this Boeing building, and I'm saying this because it's like a model. Okay, listen to me. You can do this too. There's some you're watching. There's some pastors. There's some leaders, uh, ministry leaders are just, you know, maybe you're not. Maybe you're a business person and God's going to call you to host the Holy Spirit. But the Lord says you have prepared this huge place in your building. And the Lord says, I'm going to fill it with my glory. Literally, I see a glory presence coming to the church, okay, that, that people are going to run to the presence of God. And I want to tell you, Chuck, and you know this, the first night of the Global Prophetic Summit this year, when the doors opened, people oh. were running to get in. Yeah. Uh, it I mean, was just, I mean, I, maybe that was the anointing that was there. Mm -hmm. There was such an excitement that was generated by people coming in. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think the church has to have again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are having apostolic uh, gatherings and they're different. They're, mm -hmm. they're different than anything we've ever mm -hmm. seen before, mm -hmm. like what we experienced there. But the church has to have that where mm -hmm. people are rushing in to say, I'm excited to be and gather and then be sent out to accomplish what I need to accomplish during the week. I, I'm telling you, we're shifting and, mm -hmm. and you can feel it shifting. Mm -hmm. and it's not an easy shift, but mm -hmm. we're all going through it. And mm -hmm. some of you at home there, you are securing your home mm -hmm. just to make it ready for how God is going to bathe you in his presence. And then every place you walk, when you leave that house, it's going to affect the area. You're going to have fa you're going to have favor at the grocery stores, and and Mike, that word. Let me hit that one more time. 
the word of God is going to become alive to God's people again this year. And it's going to break them into a whole new mm -hmm. dimension of reality that they've not been in. They have believed the word, but they've not activated the word. And the Lord says, I'm going to use my hammer of favor to make my word active this year. Mm -hmm. 